Greetings to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is Mazuma Kenneth once again. And I want to appreciate everyone of you that are our outstanding listeners and all of you that have decided to continue to be students of the Word of the Lord by cross-examining a number of different things that have been taught on our various forums and on various uh, platforms. We appreciate the Lord so much for each and every one of you that has picked and uh, taken interest in wanting to continue to search out scripture like the believers in Berea as far as uh, the book of Acts chapter 17, 11 uh, makes it very clear for each and every one of us. That is basically a typical example that was given unto us to search scriptures and to cross-examine whatever that is being communicated. We shouldn't elevate any man above that which is written. That's why Paul was also very happy uh, for the Berenians to actually have come to a place of being able to look actually down upon him being actually a man that was separated as far as uh, uh, the apostle to the Gentile is concerned, but they still cross-examined everything that he was communicating. So that's the way for us to go. And uh, today I want us also to continue to look at something uh, uh, new as in the same line of the things we have covered, that is to do with the, the tribulation and the coming wrath. We have done a number of, di- of different teachings under this particular series. And uh, there are other particular things that uh, we also need to look on too. So before we get into all of this, it's very important uh, to understand that the issue of the millennium is one of the things that is also not commonly taught in the modern day church today the reason is very simple is that some people do not have just a clear understanding of what it is and some other people they do not have any interest in wanting to know what it's all about because if an individual picks interest in wanting to know what will happen during the time of the millennium that will basically mean that that individual will get into study and things are clearly uh, given unto us in the scripture that we need to be knowing concerning those particular issues Issues. So today we are looking at the, the truth about the millennium or actually what we can call the messianic kingdom. The truth about the millennium or actually what we call the messianic kingdom. So this is an important event that also needs our attention. Remember the start of all this is 2 Timothy 2.15. Paul was very clear when he was writing to Timothy. He said, study to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself approved. Before we are approved of men, we are approved of God. That is why God does not in one or the other endorse a minister that is not a student of his word. That's very important. I've always repeated it and I'm saying it once again. That's how it is in the scripture. God approves only ministers that are student of his word. It has not to say a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. There is something on top of this that you and I need to understand. The Bible says a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. That means that if a person is not a student of the word of God, that person will be ashamed even of some particular areas that are within the writings of the scriptures because he will be lacking this one below. That means to say, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because if you cannot rightly divide, you will end up being ashamed of talking about particular portions of scripture and then another thing that will happen to you if you don't know how to rightly divide you will end up mixing up the entire bible what is of the old testament you apply it in the new testament and what is of the new testament you apply it in the old testament so you don't know what is to be continued and what is to be discontinued as far as the old testament is concerned and then you end up doing what we call the commingling of scriptures so looking at the message Messianic kingdom or what we call the millennium. This is actually a period as far as the events that are going to lead to what we call eternity that we also need to pay close attention to uh, regarding this particular matter. And that's why since we have covered a number of things that are to do with the tribulation and the coming wrath, the blessedness of those that die in Christ and uh, the Antichrist uh, system and all of those that are involved in it, uh, the great white throne judgment and so a number of different things that we have considered it's also important for us to look at uh, the millennium or what we are calling the messianic kingdom the time when christ will be reigning here on earth for a period of one thousand 
years. So this is the period in one way or the other that um, when you look at the book of uh, Revelation chapter 20, it says that, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit with a great chain in his hand. There is a reason for that angel having the key of the bottomless pit, verses 2, and he laid hold of the dragon. Now the dragon here in, in context, still they are talking about the devil. Remember these are the two wings of the, of the devil's move against the church. The first one is the serpent, that is the deceiver, and then the dragon is the persecutor. The same way it is made very clear in Revelation 12 of seeing that woman that was being persecuted by the dragon. The Bible says that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and born him for a thousand years. So before we enter into the millennium, there are particular things I've already discussed concerning what happens before the millennium. The devil himself will be born for a period of 1,000 years. That is why in the term of the millennium, there will not be tempting. There will not be any temptation that comes from what we call the devil and his demons and all of those particular things. Verse 3, it has to say, and cast him into the bottomless pit. As we are reigning with Christ here, as far as his 1,000 uh, years of reign here on earth, the devil will be actually incarcerated or he will be thrown already into the bottomless pit and it will be shut upon him and a seal will be set upon him and he should not deceive the nations. So during the time of the millennium, the Bible says the nations will no longer be deceived by the devil anymore till their thousand years should be fulfilled. After that, he must be loosed a little. This is one of the things that we have also made on other teachings to make a concretization that basically means that no believer, no minister, no any prayer warrior has been given the right and the authority to bond the devil other than that particular angel that God has chosen in that particular time that is going to bind him and actually throw him into the bottomless pit for a period of 1,000 years. And on this I have made myself clear by telling you that the simplest the Bible shows that we have been given that we are supposed actually in one or the other to implement is to put on the full armor of God as stipulated in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verses 10 to verses 17. The other thing that is also very peculiar as far as we are concerned is the issue of knowing that James chapter 4 verse 7 is also clear on that note. Submitting ourselves to God, resisting the devil, and the devil shall flee away from us. Now, that's very important. So as we continue to live on and being sanctified by the truth which is the word of God, we need to live by the clear instructions that are already given and to us, not to add or to subtract. That's very important. So, the period leading to the millennium, we realize that uh, from the Bible, when you look into the book of uh, Revelation chapter 19, and uh, verses uh, 20, the Bible shows us that, uh, and the beast was taken with him, and the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So the Antichrist and the beast, they will be the first group of individuals that will test what we call the lake of fire. So they will be thrown in life. Verses 21, it says, the remnant that was slain with a sword of him that sat upon the earth. So we see that one thing that is very outstanding is that the Antichrist and the false prophet will be actually cast into the lake of fire alive. And that will be the first group to test what we call the lake of fire. So by the time we come to the Re to Revelation 20 verses 1 to verse 3, which we have also seen that it states that Satan will be cast into the, uh, the bottomless pit, imprisoned for a period of 1,000 years until the 1,000 years are actually over. The Bible makes it much more clear for us to understand from what we have already discussed that uh, during that particular time of the millennium, the devil won't be moving around. However, one thing we know for sure that we do not have to take for granted the particular things that are going to happen before the millennium basically comes to pass. One of it is actually 
uh, we know that uh, the Antichrist and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire. The second thing that will happen, the devil will actually be born for a period of 1,000 years. And then the other thing that we also need to understand is that uh, the rest of the nations will no longer be deceived, will no longer be deceived because the one that would deceive them will be already in prison for a period of 1,000 years. And then the other thing is what actually Paul the Apostle made also very clear when you look into the book of Romans chapter 11, Romans chapter 11 and verses 25. He said it like this and he made it so very clear for us by saying, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, which is one mystery that we talked about one time back, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that the blindness in part is happened unto Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So these are some of the things that are going to precede what we call the millennium. The Bible talks about something that is going to happen and one of it is that the Bible makes an emphasis that is to do with the fullness of the Gentiles coming in. That is during the time of the church age. So many Gentiles will basically do what? Will enter into the church. And then the other thing that is also very important that uh, the Bible also stipulates for us in the book of Acts chapter 15 verses 14. This is what it also says when James was speaking to the to all other leaders as far as the Jerusalem conference is concerned. Simon has declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. These are basically individuals that are known as the Gentiles. So all of these things they are going to happen prayer to what we call the time of the millennium. So that's very, very, very important. So the millennium period is also known as the messianic kingdom. So before Christ reigns on earth, the number of things that will happen first, and we have made it very clear by saying the Antichrist, the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire alive, the devil himself will be incarcerated or imprisoned for a period of 1,000 years. And then the other thing is what Paul also made very clear in the book of Romans 11, 25 by saying that the fullness of uh, the Gentiles will have to first come in. And then the other thing is what we have also seen as far as Acts chapter 15 verses 14 where actually James said that Simon has declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Those are actually individuals known as Gentiles. So the other thing that we need to dig into before I take you back into the book of Revelation is that when we talk about the millennium it's the same period that is also known as uh, the messianic kingdom. It's the same thing that is also known as the kingdom of God. It's the same thing that is also known as the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. Because when you look into the book of Revelation chapter 11, still the Bible concretizes on that note by showing us in verses 15 something very, very important. It says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's very, very important. So the millennium period is also known as the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, who will basically do what? Reign forever and ever. The other thing that is also very important for us to consider is the book of Luke chapter 22. Just to add on to that, because scriptures have to be explained by other scriptures, uh, Luke 22, 17, this is what it says. And he took the cup and gave thanks. And he said, take this and divide it among his So For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall do what shall come. This is actually the same thing that Jesus made very clear in the book of Matthew, which is commonly known as the disciples' prayer. Uh, where he talked about that when we talk about prayer, we should pray that thy kingdom come. So before the kingdom of the Lord comes here, he said he will never taste or drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. That is the time that we call the millennium period. 
the time of the millennial rule of the person of Christ. So this is the physical time of reign of Christ here on earth and it will also lead to the new era that begins with the creation of a new heaven and new earth. Just like we see that as we finalize, as we go past uh, what we call the, the millennial time and actually the end of what we call the battle of the Megiddo, you see one thing that basically happens is that the Bible says, and I saw heaven and new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea. So after the battle of the Megiddo, the enemies of the Lord have been dealt away with. The, the fire from heaven came down and burnt them and all all of that particular thing that is concerned and then also what we know as the great white throne judgment is also uh, uh, finished we shall enter into another new era which new era we are calling it the time when we shall have what we call the new earth the new heaven the new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away so the first heaven will be succeeded by the new heaven and the first earth will be succeeded by the new earth and the bible says in this new earth there was no more sea so the sea will won't be basically there so that is very important now going back still to onto what we are looking onto here as far as uh, talking about the millennium we are emphasizing by saying that the millennial period was also spoken about by christ if you look into the gospels like we have already looked at luke chapter 2 22 verses 17 to 18 it is also very clear when you read from the book of uh, of matthew chapter 12 and verse 32 this is the same thing it says it says and whosoever speaketh the word against the son of man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the holy spirit shall not be forgiven him neither neither in this world neither in the world to come so that still there talks still about the same thing that is to do with what we have known as the millennial time where christ will be basically doing what reigning here on earth a period of actually one thousand years so looking at mark chapter 10 and verse 30 it also concretizes by saying but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time uh, in this time houses and brethren sisters and mothers children and lands with persecution and in the world to come eternal life those are realities that will happen to all of they that faith in the person of jesus christ let us also consider another scripture that concretizes on the same thing and that is the book of luke chapter 18 and the verse is 30 this is what it says in verse 30 who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come eternal life those are the faithful followers of the person of jesus christ the same is true in the book of hebrews chapter 2 and the verse is 5 it adds in by saying for unto the angels has he not put in subjection the world to come wherefore we speak so you cannot make a bible or a sound bible teaching by one verse only it there has to be a number of different scriptures that concretize on the same thing remember what we should always consider text in the context without the isolation of what we call a core text because if we do a text in context but in isolation with, with what we call actually the cortex we shall end up with what we basically call a pretext so there are some people who run with a text minus reading in context in isolation actually what we call the cortex they end up with what we call a pretext and that is what we mean by person teaching his own word ideas but we need to look into this side we need also to look into the other side to make a sound bible teaching so we cannot talk about the messianic kingdom or the millennium reign of jesus christ and we also fail to talk about the feasts of israel in the book of leviticus so there are about seven are feasts as far as the book of leviticus is concerned some of these i actually communicated them in a one of our teaching that is known as the seven mysteries that are revealed in the bible but uh, for the sake of the gospel i want to refer to them so that we can have a clear order of how things were in fact spoken about before the writing of the new testament before even the writing of the book of revelation so there are a number of seven feasts 
of Israel. When you get into the book of Leviticus and some of them are in the book of uh, actually Exodus. But the first one is what is known as the feast of the Passover. We remember what happened in the book of Exodus. Consider chapter uh, 12 to chapter 14. There are a number of different things there where the Lord gave them instructions as far as applying the blood on the doorpost and the lentils of the door. Uh, and that was basically a type Jesus would fulfill. Jesus himself died on a Passover. So that Passover had to be a memorial event for all the Israelis throughout the generations. That whoever had the blood on their doorpost, the angel of death could not claim them. That is why in our New Testament, St. Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. As far as First Corinthians, the Bible says in Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. The other thing, the second, whatever feast is what is known as the feast of the unleavened bread. That is very important for us also to consider that is what the Jews ate there and Jesus was indeed that unleavened bread. There was no sin in him. Second Corinthians 5.21 says that him who knew no sin was made sin that we might become the righteousness of God. The third one as far as the feast of the nation of Israel is known as the feast of the first fruit. That was actually to point onto Christ being the first person to be raised from the word of they that are dead. That is why First Corinthians 15.20 says that Christ is our first fruits. So that has already been fulfilled. The fourth one is what is known as the Feast of the Pentecost. Remember, after 50 days, as far as the resurrection of Christ is concerned, the Holy Spirit was poured out. And that is why when you go to the book of uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8, Jesus talks about what would happen when the Holy Spirit would be poured out. And in chapter 2 of Acts, the Spirit of the Lord was poured up. And that is when the church was basically done what? Born. All of these four uh, feasts have already come to pass. Now, there are other feasts that have not yet come to pass. That is feast number five. And that is known as the Feast of the Trumpets, which also talks so much about the time of the rapture of the church. First Corinthians 15 has more details concerning that particular event. So that one is one of the immediate ones that we are looking unto as far as we people that are in this New Testament church age. The sixth one is what is known as the Day of the Atonement or the Feast of the Day of the atonement. It is very unfortunate that we have even ministers all over Africa and even in our own country that have mobilized and have come up with meetings that are known as the Day of Atonement and Prayer. You imagine this is something that is going to be practiced during the time of the millennium. How do you apply it now? How are they already in the millennium? This is part of the swamp that we need to drain out of the church completely. The, the last one is known as uh, the Feast of actually Tabernacle. The Feast of the Tabernacles. So the Feast of the Tabernacles is where we are going to camp so much because the first four are already fulfilled respectively. The crucifixion, we have talked about it. The sinlessness of the sacrifice, the Lamb of the Lord, we have also seen it as far as what John called Jesus in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away all the sins of the world. We have also seen, seen actually the one that is also to do with the Lord's resurrection, that is to do with the first fruit. And then we have also seen the one that concerns what we call the birth or the formation of the church of Jesus Christ, which we have also known as the Feast of the Pentecost. That one has already also done what? come to pass. So all of these things here have already in one or the other come to pass. So but the main one that we are now talking about is the feast, uh, the feast of tabernacles. And that is the very period of the millennial term in which uh, after the great tribulation we shall enter that time when the devil will be imprisoned. Remember John 1.14 says that uh, the word which was in the beginning it later on put on flesh. In other words, it tabernacled amidst us or among us. So that same thing of John 1.14 is being replayed during the millennial time where the Lord himself will tabernacle us, will be amidst his people. And that's why we call it the messianic kingdom where Christ will be reigning here on earth for a period of one thousand years. So the Lord will again amidst his people boldly among them and hence fulfilling what we call the feast of the tabernacles. And uh, when you look into the book of Leviticus 23, 30, 3 to 44, it has more details. But uh, for the sake of time, I want to take the short one, which is in the book of Amos. Looking at Amos chapter 9, this is what it says in the book of, of uh, Amos chapter 9 verses uh, 
11. It says, And in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the branches thereof, and I'll raise up his ruins, and I'll build it as in the days of the old. That is actually as far as Israel and Jerusalem is concerned. The other that I also want to concretize with is actually Zachariah chapter 14 and verse is 16. This is what it says in 14, 16. Zachariah chapter 14 verse 16. It says here, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which come against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. That's what we are talking about. Everything is being stipulated in the scripture. Those that have interest in wanting to study the scriptures, there is no thing that that the Bible mentions about that does not have enough uh, evidence from the old and the new testament so uh this is it that is the the time of uh, of the millennium when the lord will be basically here reigning however there are those uh, whom we call a uh, millennialist and those are individuals that do not believe in what we call pre-millennium and uh uh, the group of such individuals are the people like uh, the Roman Catholic Church. They don't believe uh, that millennium will basically be there. So they don't believe in the physical reigning of Christ here on earth. They think that we are already in millennium. So those are bad teachings and th that, is, that is actually something that is uh, an attack against the scriptures. So we need to revise things before we formulate them and actually we endorse them as our statements of faith and go back to the scripture and correct ourselves. So so some of the things that I also want to cover under this uh, is to show you the people that are going to be in the millennium. The first thing that we need to understand that in the millennium we shall have human beings there, we shall have animals there, we shall also have plants there. But amongst the individuals, there are three different categories of the humans that you and I should consider uh, to be in existence during the time of the millennium. The first one are those that are already in their glorified bodies. Those are all believers that were raptured. Those are all believers that were already what? Raptured. And those are the individuals that we know that are going to be within the millennial period without them having the mortal bodies. People that have been exempted from their sinful nature because they have now entered into a glorious state. So that is one of the things that we should know that that is one of the group that is going to be there because when Brother Jude was talking about it in Jude 14 I want to show something here in the book of Jude 14. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these things saying, Behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So those are believers that are part of the body of Christ that already in one way or the other who have crossed to a glory and part of those who are actually raptured within what we call the time of, a, of the great tribulation and all of those the Lord took them for him. So that is one thing that we should basically know about that. The second group, there will also be those individuals in one or the other that will have in one or the other survived what we call, survived actually what we call the tribulation. And those individuals that had survived the tribulation, they're also part of the millennium, but the only unique difference about them, they will still have their mortal bodies. So and that is very important. Category number three are those individuals that will be born uh, into the kingdom or during the millennial reign of Christ here on earth. The children of those people that survived the tribulation Tribulation will actually be born uh, during the time of the millennial reign, and so that is one thing we say that since their fathers survived the tribulation, when they give birth to children, those children will still also have the same mortal bodies, just like what their parents. And so here is where I need you now to pay close attention to the writings of the scriptures. I want to take you uh, to the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 65, and we also look at some of the things. Uh, that was shown to Isaiah way back before we even thought that uh, uh, someday the Lord Jesus will come. But one thing we thank the Lord about is that scriptures have everything that we need to know. So when you look at Isaiah 65 and the verse, if I may begin with verses, uh, verses 23, it says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Those are the people during the time of the millennium. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. There are some people who have used this 
scripture right now. There is a teaching that I think we have also done that is to with the uh, uh, establishing millennium before millennium. You hear so many prayer warriors saying, the Lord says in his word, that before you, you pray, before you call, he will answer. That before you speak, he will hear. That is not now. That is during the time of what we call what? The millennium. You need to understand some of it. That is why I've also had a number of ministers saying that, how can a believer fall sick? How can a believer be poor? How can a believer lack this and that? Those are individuals that are trying in one or the other to establish millennium before millennium. There are particular things that are actually going to be a normative that are going to be realities on the other side but they are not yet a reality onto this side we are still having what we call perishable bodies first corinthians 15 53 is very clear about those particular things but then still you'll hear people say a believer cannot fall sick and all of that nonsense so i think it is the the issue that i started with that is still a challenge there are people who are suffering from the issue of right dividing. If they try to divide, they end up actually commingling and mixing up things together. But the Bible says that these will be a re- realities in the millennial term. Verses uh, 25. The wall of and the lamb shall feed together. That is the term of the millennium. So wall offs are actually a no-go zone area for you and I to play with them. Because right now they are not yet tamed to the max. You can tame them to a particular level but not fully. But during the time of the millennium, the Bible says the wall of and the lamb shall feed together. This is not a possibility right now in the modern world where we are. And the lion shall eat straw. Look at that one there. Like the bullock. And the dust shall be the serpent is meat. Now, this is one thing that is going to remain consistent. The curse of Genesis towards the serpent will still stand in the time of the millennium. That is why here the Bible says, for the serpent still it will continue to do what? To feed on the on the dust as its meat. And they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Those are things that the Bible tells us that they are going to be realities. Animals will also be there like we have already now talked about them. And one thing that is also very important is for us to know what the book of Micah chapter 4 uh, adds in. Micah chapter 4. When you look into the book of Micah chapter 4 and the verses 4, it says, But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. So during the time of the millennium, people are looking for compensation in this world for a number of things they have lost. That's not going to be a reality. People are looking for justice in this world. You may, you may not. But one thing I can assure you, there is a world which is coming where we are having, where we are going to have Christ reign actually here on earth. We shall have all the justice that we have always ever yearned for. But for now, I cannot promise you whether you are a believer or you are not what? A believer. So these are important things for us to know. In the time that in during the time of the millennium, the change uh, will actually be there. There will be something that will go into some particular outstanding changes. That is number one, that is to do with the bodies of animals. From them being carnivorous, like those early animals which are carnivorous, they will change into being herbivorous, meaning they will solely depend on eating what we call plants. So there will also be a, a change in their digestive system, whereby they will have to, in one way, to be adjusted to eating plants. That's something very important. So those who are saved, uh, and actually in one way, that those that have survived the tribulation will still be here on earth, to enter into the millennium with their mortal bodies like I've already made it, but they will still do what? They will still die. These are individuals that will be both what? Jews and Gentiles. So when you look at uh, Isaiah, uh, still if I may go back to concretize on that particular thing I've just mentioned, looking at uh, the book of Isaiah 65 and the verse is 20, uh, this is what it says, There shall be no more hence an infant of days, no and what? old man that has not filled his days. So we are going to go back. The term of the millennium, for those that have what we call the mortal bodies, they will basically go back. It will be just like the antediluvian days, the time of uh, Adam and uh, Methula, where people are living over 900 and plus years. That is one thing that uh, still will be replayed again during the term of the millennium. That is why the Bible says that there shall be no more 
infants. There are people still who have claimed this, that a believer cannot die at 30 years, at 20 years, at, uh, at 40 years, at 50 years, at 60 years, at uh, 70 years. At least it should be 70 and above. But I'm telling you, we are not yet in millennium. And what I'm also telling you, the curse is still actually very prevalent in this modern and in this physical world. It is still there. That is why one thing you cannot afford to avoid is you aging. Look at yourself. The way you used to look at 20 years, is it the same way you look now at your 50, at your 60? Every time there are some changes, your body continues to, to go under what we call a disintegration. You want it or not. You can use all the syrups. You can use all the chemicals. You can use all the scrubbing. You can use all the plastic surgeries. You can use all kind of vaselines, but I'm telling you, all of them, they are not going to keep you the same way you looked at 15, at 20, at 30. You are aging and you're going. Even if you don't die of an accident, of any disease, of any virus, still you will die. The age itself will fight you. So, but the term is here. The Bible says, there shall be no more hence an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die at a hundred years old. That is during the time of the millennium. For individuals that had not yet or in one way that individuals that were, that had not put on what we call the glorified bodies. The Bible adds into saying, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be a cast. Now, look at that. Those are things that the Bible puts an emphasis on too. That will basically do what happened. So, those in their glorified bodies will be already healed of their sin natures, leaving the natures that are, that are basically pure, holy, and undefiled, and incapable of sinning. Whoever will have been already dead before the tribulation, and uh, those that will be caught before actually the end of the tribulation and actually taken up, those are the ones that are going to come back with the Lord in their glorified bodies. And uh, one thing that is also very peculiar for us to understand is that they shall no longer, the Bible makes it very clear, such individuals that will be in their glorified bodies, they shall no longer experience death because they no longer possess the sinful nature. And that is actually the sinful nature that, that is in the bodies of those that still have the mortal bodies. That is why the Bible makes it very clear that in Adam we all died, but in Christ we are all made alive. That means that the physical death will not have an opportunity over us and there are particular things that we shall not be able to do one of it is what jesus made very clear to the question that the pharisees were asking and he answered them radically and clearly by saying when you look at uh, when you look at matthew 22 and verses 28 it says therefore in the resurrection whose wife shall be of the seven if they shall in fact let me begin it down here for you to get it very well it says in verses uh, 23 matthew 22 23 the same day came to him the Sadducees remember they didn't believe in the resurrection on that part the Pharisees actually for them believed in what we call the resurrection so even amid this, these different groups uh, I would say that uh, uh, the Pharisees were more orthodox than the Sadducees because much of what they were believing was actually biblical apart from the traditions of men that they held on to so much but now the Sadducees since they never believed in the resurrection they were actually thought that they, that they were having it is a question that would silence Christ, but he had an answer for them. Which saith that there is no resurrection, asks verses 20, 24. Say, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. 25. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Verses 26. Likewise the second also and the third unto the seventh, the last of all, the woman died also. 28. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. So they thought this was a tricky one. And the Lord, you know, they're like a gotcha scripture. Like in one of, one of the things that now here we have you, you have nowhere to go. The Bible says in verses 29, and just like people don't also believe in the resurrection, people believe in a annihilation of a, and then people believe in the soul sleep, all of those particular things, the seven Adventists, the Mammons, the Jehovah's Witness, and all of 
of that stuff. Look at verses 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do error, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Verses 30. For in the resurrection day, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. This one answers a number of things that you'd have for me as far as the millennial time. People already in their glorified bodies, they will not marry. Why? Angels don't marry. Angels don't procreate. The other thing that the Bible also mentions, that not being able to marry is actually tied to what we call the resurrection. So those with their mortal bodies, those who will still be in their mortal bodies, they will still do what? They will still be able to produce and have children. And we have seen from Isaiah 65 and the verses 20 that the infants of they, if they were to die, they will only die at the age of 100 years. So those are all important things that you can basically do what? Consider. I want to show you some other thing here that is also very important. Probably you'll also take interest in it. Is when the Bible talks about the issue that is to do with the nature of those that are having the glorified bodies when looking at the book of First Corinthians 15, 36. This is what it says. You fool, that which soweth is not quickened except it dieth. Verses 37. The people don't want to die. They want to have glorified bodies, but they don't want to die. The Bible says in 37, that which you soweth, you soweth not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat of some other grain. 38 doesn't say, but God giveth it a body, and as it has pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Look at that. Every seed is on body. So in the resurrection, there's a different body. 39. All flesh is not of the same flesh. Look at that. But there is one kind of flesh of men and another flesh of beasts and another flesh of fish and another flesh and another of birds. Look at now verses 40. It doesn't say there are also celestial bodies. There are also celestial bodies and the bodies Telestial. So there is what we call celestial, that is out of this world, and there is what, what, what we call telestial, that is of this world. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the telestial is another. Pay close attention to this as we bring this to a conclusion. It has to say, there is one glory of the sun. Look at that one there. There is one glory of the sun and uh, another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Okay, verses are 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. So the people that will already be having the glorified bodies, they will be in what we call in corruption. 43. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. That is to mean that our bodies right now before the resurrection are still in weakness. It is raised in power. Verses 44. And it is sown in a natural body. That means that our physical bodies right now are still natural. And it is raised It is raised a spiritual body. A glorified body is the same thing as spiritual body. And there is a natural body and there is also a spiritual body. 45. It doesn't say. So it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quick Kenning spirit. Look at 40, 46. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and after that which is spiritual. So the spiritual will succeed what we call the natural. Right now, we are putting on the natural bodies. But when we are raised, when we are caught up in the rapture, that is when we put on the spiritual bodies. 47. For the first man is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is the Lord from heaven. Since the Lord is from heaven, therefore we put on the heavenly bodies. Verses 48. As it is the earthy, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Since Adam was of the earth, that is a literal meaning, even they that are born of Adam, they are of earth. It adds into say. And as the heavenly, such are they also also that are heavenly. If you belong to Christ, since he's of heavenly, therefore your body will be, you will be actual of the nature of heaven. 49. And as we have born image of the earth, we shall also bear the image of the heaven. So before you put on the image of the heavenly, first of all, you and I are still putting on the image of the earthy. 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit in corruption. That is it as far as the millennial time and each and everything.
that you need to know about that. How do they get saved? It is very simple. That is why we have what what is known as the feast of the day of the atonement. The same way the Old Testament individuals had to look onto the sacrifices, had to put faith in the sacrifices. That sacrifice was pointing to Christ. Therefore, the people in the millennium, they will look back to the sacrifice that Jesus gave upon the cross of Calvary to receive their salvation. For us, we look unto him that was sacrificed with faith in, in the sacrifice of Christ. So now these people in the millennium, they will have to look back onto what? The Old Testament people, they were to look forward to what the Lord would do upon the cross of Calvary. But now the people in the millennium, they will look back to what Jesus did upon the cross of Calvary and faithing in that one single sacrifice because we don't have another sacrifice other than that that was given by Jesus Christ. And the reason for that is actually the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verses 12 makes it very clear. Neither by the blood of, of, of goats and cows, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained for us eternal redemption which is the same thing that is repeated in verses uh, uh, 24 of hebrews 9 it says for christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us 25 no yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of what? Him by the sacrifice of himself. So Christ died once. We don't have any other sacrifice. If the sacrifice of Christ is not enough for some individuals. I'm telling you, they will never be saved. It is very clear. He died once and is not going to die again. To all of you that are not yet in Christ, you have had it all. Jesus is the only sacrifice for our sin that God gave for us. And if you come to a place of repenting after you've had this wonderful gospel and you believe in his death, burial and resurrection after you have repented of your sins, I'm telling you, you can be saved right now because salvation is not tomorrow. Second Corinthians 6 to says that behold salvation is for today. Stop postponing because every time you postpone you will not experience. And I'm telling you heaven is real and hell is also real. But the good news is Jesus did everything possible to keep you away from going to hell. That is why you are hearing me speaking. That is why you are able to hear this message. So I urge you to receive the Lord Jesus today. And for more information, call us on 0773-237065. I repeat, 0773-237065. Shalom.